All right, today we're going to be talking about two different kinds of, of homeschooling. One is through a public education program. The other is private. One we talk about as perhaps a, a charter school program or public school independent study programs. There's a number of different ways somebody can, can educate their child at home but through a public school program. In California, we can also homeschool privately. And so we refer to that option as private homeschooling. And we here at FPM have as our mission, um, our, our goal is to keep private homeschooling legal and um, free from regulations that would stifle a parent's ability to have flexibility in how they give an education to their child. And so we want to protect private homeschooling. That's our goal. Our goal is to protect private homeschooling in California. Now, there are other folks that work to protect uh, the, the flexibility and the right of parents to choose an education through various public education programs, but that's not what our mission is. Our mission is to protect private home education. So let's jump right into the, the differences between these. First of all, on this chart, public versus private education chart, you'll see at the top it says the compulsory education code section 48200. Now this code is what requires children in the state of California to attend school. Now there are certain exemptions to that and that's what we'll see on the green side of this chart. But on the black side, let's start with that. These um, code sections outline the various types of public school programs that there are in California. Now you will know that uh, typical campus-based public schools uh, over there at the at the extreme right there on this chart, the campus-based private school is the is the more traditional public school that you're used to to hearing about or seeing as you go through any town in the state of California. Next to that, you'll see ISP. Now, the ISP stands for Independent Study Program. Now, that is through a public school or through a county superintendent potentially, but it is through the public education program and is therefore needing to submit to the public school system. So it falls under a different set of laws than private home education. It falls under the authority of the public school system. Next over we have the charter school program and there's, as you perhaps know, there's a wide range of types of charter schools in California. There's even a wide range of charter campus schools in California and they function in a variety of different ways and we're not going to get into all those but charter schools also fall under the, the authority of the public school system. Now some charter school programs are programs where children may attend one or two days a week at a campus and then the rest of the time they're learning their studies at home. Other times they're hundred percent at home and they never go to a classroom, but they're all, if they're part of a charter school, they're under the authority of the public school system. So those are the, the three main types of um, public school programs where um, education um, takes place through the public school system. Now, let's go to the other side of that red dashed line. Well, let's stop and take a look at that red dashed line for just a minute first. The red dashed line represents sort of a wall of separation between the public school system and the private school system in California. Now the private school system isn't really a system because it's, it's an area of law that education can happen but in a, a variety of different ways again, but it's not under the authority of the public school system. It's it's private education, so it's run by private folks, private 
organizations, private uh, schools that are established by a board of directors, or a private school that's maybe run by a church or different religious group. You have a wide range of private education programs in the state of California. Private schools are one major part of that, but then you also have the tutorial exemption. So that red dashed line is the separation between these two main types of education in California. That's why um, this chart helps us to understand the difference between the, the public side and the private side. So now let's go over to the private side. Private homeschooling um, is what we focus on protecting here at Family Protection Ministries. And it is um, in this one little area down at the bottom. So let's start, let's start at the top and see how we get down to there. So 48220 is the beginning of the exemption section of the, of the California Code. The California Education Code has various ways that children can be exempt from the law to re that requires students to attend a public school in California. That's what the law says. All students between the ages of 6 and 18 need to attend public school, but there are exemptions. So private school falls under these exemptions. So let's take a look. Exemptions include private school and tutorial exemption. So the tutor exemption is 48224. That section says if you are being taught by a private tutor, licensed in the subjects and grade levels that they are teaching, then they can uh, not go to public school. They can be taught by that tutor. That's legal in California. There are other restrictions, but that's a legal option in California. The other one that most other private schools and private education functions under is the private school exemption in 48222. Now, private schools can function in a variety of ways just like public schools can. You can have your traditional campus-based brick and mortar school where everybody goes to school five days a week. Regular classrooms, kids go to class, then they go home after school. You can also have what, what's called a PSP or a private school satellite program, others otherwise known as a, an umbrella school or an umbrella program. These might be um, attached to a campus school or perhaps not where one uh, central unit is, is overseeing um, a number of families or groups of people that are, that are schooling uh, perhaps in different ways but primarily what we're looking at is where there might be a bunch of families homeschooling at home but they are responsible to one central unit that sort of oversees those families and files their paperwork for them. Helps them to uh, understand what they're responsible for in terms of an education for the children. And ultimately the person running that PSP or group of people running that PSP are responsible ultimately for the education of all the children enrolled in that PSP because it is a school. Now. That brings us to the next option, which is a single-family private school. In California, a single family can create their own private school and determine the way that they want to educate in their own private school. They can then um, they notify the state of California, hey, we've got a private school functioning here, and um, they determine how their uh, their own children are going to be taught who's going to do the teaching and they get to determine how that all plays out what their focuses are going to be what curriculum they're going to use um, ultimately you know what what the mission of their school is going to be is is whatever they make it to be and they the parents in that situation in that single family private school the parents are responsible to make sure that those children uh, get an appropriate education. So those are the, the, the main areas of education in California. These are the main areas of, of private homeschooling in California. Now a number of families in California um, create that, that single family private school. They file an affidavit with the state. You've probably heard of that, filing the affidavit, which is done every year for, for each school. 
family can file that when they have created their own private school. They notify the state that they have a school in existence. That's when you file the affidavit. PSP, on the other hand, files the affidavit for everyone that's enrolled in their school. So each individual family doesn't file their own affidavit. The school files the affidavit for each, each person. So that's kind of uh, a way to look at the difference between the public school programs and the private school programs. Private homeschooling and where that falls under the code versus um, homeschooling through some public program. And hopefully that, that helps you to understand um, what we're looking at in terms of uh, the authority structure here. Um, private, private homeschooling is, practice, is a practice that functions under private school law in California. Private homeschooling does not fall under the authority of the public school system. Hopefully that helps you understand better, and we'll see you next time.